The first kind of nothing I want to talk about would be the nothing of the Bible. Empty space, an eternal, dark, empty void. Well, the simplest answer to why there's something rather than nothing in such a universe is quite simple. The surprising thing would not be that there's something. The surprising thing would be if there's nothing. But if there were nothing, we wouldn't be around to ask the question. Because it turns out, due to the laws of quantum mechanics and gravity, if you wait long enough, nothing will always form something. Remember what the space inside of a proton looked like, these virtual fields popping in and out of existence? Well, they go into existence, and they, and they come out of existence because they take energy. To create the field takes energy, and then you can borrow the energy from nothing, but you have to return it. So that's why quantum mechanics says these fields pop in and out of existence. But once you allow for gravitational interactions of particles, you can break particles, particle-antiparticle pair, whose total energy is zero. Because the gravitational energy, the negative energy, will counter the positive energy that it takes to create them. And once you create a pair with total energy zero, they can exist forever. So quantum mechanics says these processes are random. So if you have empty space and you wait long enough, you'll always create particles. Empty space is unstable. Nothing is unstable. So as I say, the surprising thing would not be that there's a lot of stuff in the universe. The surprising thing would be that there were nothing in the universe. We're asking the wrong question. It's not surprising at all. This question that used to surprise the ancients and the philosophers in the old days was surprising to them just because they didn't know about quantum mechanics. That's okay. We've actually learned something. That's a good thing. Except the theologians who haven't learned anything because they still adhere to these Iron Age books that don't tell you anything. Okay, so in such a world, once we realize there's quantum mechanics and gravity, you always integrate something from empty space. You don't need any supernatural shenanigans. Okay, but some people would say, well, okay, look, that's fine, but that's not nothing. Where did the space come from? That's a valid question. Well, it turns out, once you make gravity a quantum theory, gravity is a theory of space and time. That's what Einstein told us. Once you make, try and make it a quantum theory, and I should say we don't yet have a quantum theory of gravity, but any quantum theory of gravity will be a quantum theory of space and time. And in such a theory, not only can particles pop in and out of existence in space, but spaces themselves can pop in and out of existence. They must in any quantum theory of gravity. You will create spaces and times that didn't exist before. There was no space, no time, and suddenly, poof, a universe can pop into existence, but most of the time in a world of existence. Because it violates energy conservation for it to exist for very long. But, if you create a universe with zero total energy, it can survive forever. Now, it sounds like we've got a grand synthesis, because I just told you, our universe, the one we live in, a flat universe, has zero gravitational energy for every object. And I'd love that to be the end of the story, but it's a little more subtle. Because in addition to gravitational energy, there's the energy of rest mass. Einstein told us E equals mc squared. So the gravitational energy is everything. It turns out there's only one kind of universe that has zero total energy. And it's not a flat universe, it's a closed universe. We don't know, it turns out we can't do the calculations for a flat universe and an open universe. We don't know how to do those calculations. But for a closed universe, we know it's zero. But we don't live in a closed universe. But most closed universes, as I say, expand, stop, and contract. And most closed universes that created at the beginning of time will last a fraction of a second before they collapse again. How can you make a closed universe last long enough for us to be here to talk about it? 14 billion years. The only way you can do it, it turns out, is to give empty space energy at the beginning of time. Because if you have, if you give empty space energy, then the universe will start speeding up and will expand faster and faster and faster. And in fact, particle physics predicts that there should be a phase in our universe in which it expanded by a huge amount, 10 to the 90th in volume, in a time of a millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a second. 
It's amazing. This is called inflation. It came out of particle physics, but, it, but all of our theories predict that. It will happen in order to explain the universe. You see, in fact, if that happens, one of the predictions of inflation is you'll produce lumps due to quantum mechanics, and those lumps will look just like the lump you measure in the cosmic microwave background. So we're pretty certain that inflation happened. But what happens when you puff up the universe by such a big value? Well, if I blow up balloon by a huge amount, say the size of the Earth, it looks flat. You can't see the curvature. If you blow up our universe by a huge value, it will look flat on any scale we can measure. So the only closed universe that could, and I think I'm going to skip, I had an example of beer because I was here, but I'm going to skip it. I'll skip the Higgs. I'll talk about that later. Look at my beer again. Um, you know, some of the drama. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> it will force the universe to look flat. And so the only universe that can have been created from nothing and survived as long as this has is a flat universe, or one that looks like a flat universe with zero total energy. And that's the universe we live in.